Welcome back to the Agostino Zynga show with I, your host Agostino Zynga and this is episode number 274, that's Dos Cinco Cuatro with me, your host Agostino Zynga. Welcome back to the Agostino Zynga show, I hope you are well wherever this podcast may be finding you, wherever it's finding you, I hope you are doing A-OK and you're living the life of Riley just as I'm living the life of Riley up in this sector to day i hope for those of you watching the show via youtube you can see a clear difference in the quality of this podcast in the lack of jittering of this podcast in the lack of buffering on this podcast in the clarity of my voice on this podcast because guess what i've got myself a new macbook pro 13 inch from 2012 i think is the one i've got is it 2012 i think it's 2012 the one with a cd drive i went and bought a refurbished next to new version of this mid 2012 version of a macbook pro 13 inch an absolute workhorse of a computer with one of the best keyboards ever in the history of macbooks maybe only second to the new keyboards that are out now with the current day macbooks that are kind of harking back to the old days but these macbooks are legitimately indestructible i had the one i had previously that just died on me basically i must have bought it near brand new in 2014 and it only died on me recently and i use that for everything that that kind of developed pictures that that allowed me to design flyers for my some of my earlier club nights that allowed me to write blog posts it allowed me to dj use a controller it allowed me to burn cds and then play on cdjs in a nightclub it allowed me to download movies illegally on torrents it allowed me to stream stuff online it allowed me to do so many things and it finally decided to just die on me but I decided, you know what, before I go out and get a proper streaming computer, a proper gaming laptop that I can then use to obviously do my bulk of my streaming and the bulk of any kind of video media stuff that I'm going to do in terms of a little bit of editing here and there. I thought, why not just get one of these again, just to kind of, you know, bridge the gap and to also have something that can just work from a minute ago because the other one the issue was i think the motherboard basically conked out on me even though i bought a new ram i replaced the battery i replaced the hard drive and put ssd in it i did everything that needs to be done to kind of get it up and running but the motherboard itself the gpu just couldn't handle you know being used extensively as i did use it beforehand and you know what? it's been a good server to me so for you know why not get another one and now i'm over the moon the last couple of streams I've done online, especially the ones I've done concerning the LA comedy scene have been all done using this computer that I've got right in front of me. The ones I didn't do in front of me using this computer that I used my regular MacBook Air that I recorded on, which took like two days to upload stuff was just a madness. Um, but it, and again, I'm not complaining because those machines have been absolute lifesavers for me during the most, you know, darkest of moments, especially when I was, you know, at the peak of the pandemic, unemployed for what, 18 months or so, struggling out here. It was good to have those things as kind of an escape from the regular drudgery of everyday life. But yeah, back and ready to go. I'm feeling pumped, feeling awesome just before we continue i thought i'd just give you guys a quick update regarding podcasts and everything i've been up to if you've been wondering what i've actually been up for you know what it's better to share these things because you know i'm, I'm now a somewhat a content creator i'd say a consistent one and sometimes you know when some when somebody that you do tune into regularly goes missing for a while and you don't hear from them it's nice to kind of hear an update as to where they went what happened what's the deal you know just to kind of get an insight to what's going on because you know i'm here regularly and you listen to me regularly if you like what i do and it's just nice to get an update so i have returned a few weeks now it's been so a couple of weeks now it's been since i went to lanzarote so i went to lanzarote for a bit and it was absolutely a good time a very very good time um i'm not gonna lie i had a lot of fun there ended up flying first of all from london to madrid stayed in madrid for a bit and then we went from madrid to lanzarote and then came back from lanzarote back to london and i had a blast i'm not going to lie first time being in lanzarote um first time also being in an island like that so small yet so warm yet so windy the weather was really temperamental let's just pick about that straight away the weather on that island 
um, cause maybe concerning where it is or maybe the size of the island, whatever it may be, was extremely weird. It was very temperamental. So one day, some days you'd go out and it'd be burning hot. Some days it'd be overcast with no clouds, but cool and windy. And then other days it would be super windy where you just need to get a jacket and run inside somewhere. Very, very weird. But the good thing about those places is most likely, usually anyway, places that are like in the Mediterranean, places that are hot, places that are near, you know, let's say, you know, Ledro is basically near Africa, but places that are near that kind of equator line the most thing that you need to do especially for someone like myself who's not really accustomed to being out in the sun too long because i'm from london and what i know is gray skies and rain the key to it is to try and get out as quickly as you can in the morning so usually in those sort of places i find i sleep way longer than i would do if i was back home because of the weather because of how quiet it is the fact that most places you stay in have double heavy double blinds um the flipping villa thing that we stayed in was like that it had these really heavy heavy blinds that it essentially blacked out the entire room it was quiet has hell through that the entire night maybe some people living next door here and there in the hotel maybe might have made some noise but apart from that you could sleep like a baby so sometimes you can feel like you just need to re you know recover from your sleep i know i do sometimes because i'm always kind of burning at midnight burning a candle from both ends but usually i found that if you try to take advantage of the heat as soon as you can in the mornings um, and then if it gets cool in the evenings, it kind of is what it is. And I end up taking advantage of that, doing a lot of that, um, going to different beaches, um, visiting the pool that we stay, that was basically in the villa that we stayed in, where it was awesome as well. Um, going to do a little sightseeing tour thing that was quite fun, I've, which I've never really done, to be honest. I've kind of, you know, maybe looked down my nose at it, think it's things for only old people. But when you go on those kind of holidays where you're not really sure what to do you just want to go and eat good food have some cocktails sit by the beach and just chill it's quite nice to have something to do that kind of gets you up and about especially for someone like myself who doesn't drive so book this tour that basically took us to like five different key locations around Lanzarote in terms of you know um tourist spots that you could go see like you know seeing the camels go and see some caves um seeing places where they um farm their own grapes for the wine that they sell there um seeing a mountain top and seeing views all across Lanzarote like just nice cool sits just to like to kind of see and then it kind of ends or kind of caps off with this amazing um buffet that you end up going to get which is like 10 euros and it's fucking yummy as hell that was another kind of you know mind-blowing thing and then funny enough on the table don't get me wrong the, the wine wasn't amazing but so they give you this buffet for like 10 euros or something or 20 i forgot how much it was it was something crazy small amount and then on the table that you sit down on there's like a refillable jug of red wine and a bottle of water that you just keep refilling every time you kind of finish it i end up have i ended up getting through two of those jugs of red wine i mean clearly i had a lot on my mind so that was pretty fun um overall the food there was lovely uh, it was great to go to restaurants and have people say to you oh do you want the catch of the day right um the fishermen have just come in and they've caught a particular fish you want this to be grilled for you you're like yes please and it comes you know all nicely done grilled really simply with a nice salad on the side a lemon that you squeeze all over it some potatoes and boom you're basically done like really really nice and it's not covered or drenched in sort of unnecessary sauces to kind of make it more taste make it more tasty when really the taste of the fish should be enough as it is but of course here in the uk we don't really get the best fish in it so you kind of have to do whatever you need to do to kind of get it banging or get it busting as some people would say so that was really nice um but one of the things i kind of pulled away from it i kind of was reckoning with myself and i had to stop myself i think a few days before it ended was that i can't really sit down and enjoy myself in the soft holidays i guess because i'm such a city kid i always need to be up and about doing things or kind of you know hustling working doing this doing that whatever and everywhere we stayed the wi-fi was terrible which was a great thing i think overall obviously bad for my mobile data selling network because every time i did try to log on it kind of cost me an arm and a leg in terms of downloading emails and whatnot but in terms of wi-fi it was really bad everywhere we went um bad in terms of you know it took like two days for me to upload a video onto youtube and you're wondering why are you going to landry and uploading a video on youtube that's what i mean i'm finding it really difficult to just relax and sit and i f and i kind of i kind of contrast when i go to places like that uh, v when i go to places like berlin and i have like a weekend where i basically just get absolutely 
you know laced to my eyelids and i go and dance in in really dingy nightclubs and take way too much mdma and do as many pills as i can and run up bills and bars right but i still find a way to center myself to be chill and to not kind of chase the content thing and just kind of enjoy myself i think the only times i've been to berlin i can maybe count and one no maybe two occasions where i took my laptop with me and my, my microphone to record and i did actually record a couple of podcasts out there only two occasions for the other times i've been there i've just gone there just to enjoy it as a place and then that's just it i mean not nothing more nothing less and um I wish I would have done that sooner when I went to Lanzarote. I ended up doing it towards the end and ended up kind of giving up because the Wi-Fi was so terrible. I didn't want to fight it and be the person that's going to the front and asking people if they got boosters. Like, you know, those kind of crazy stuff. Like, you just need to relax. So that was pretty nice. And, um, yeah, very enjoyable. I'm not going to lie. Very, very enjoyable way to kind of spend um, the, you know, what you call it? the first half of the year i mean going to those sort of locations because again i don't ever go to those kind of holidays um i'm mostly a city guy i'm mostly trying you know i'm most of the time <clears throat> that i'm leaving the country is to go to another country to go and rave uh, i'm doing a lot of techno tourism so to go somewhere where i wasn't going to rave i wasn't going to go to you know crowded places in terms of parties it's just about going to the beach eating food walking up and down the coast um chilling people watching getting ice cream you know just relaxing really i can't really complain i really can't so um yeah that was fun i'm not gonna lie that was fun so that's basically where i've been if you've been wondering why my content's been a bit sporadic over the past couple of um weeks or whatnot but you know we back we bike we bike anyway let's move on so number one news i wanted to quickly talk about um, i just seen this on the timeline it looks like my guy mark noble has um finally gave his speech at west ham concerning his 18 year career at the club coming to an end and him kind of going to do bigger and better things from what i've seen online mark noble west ham legend is retiring from football completely so i thought he was just going to you know he's basically not having his contract renewed at West Ham and moving on somewhere else but he's legitimately hanging up his boots and just retiring from football which I think is a pretty epic way to end a career he's ending his career as a one-man club playing for his boyhood club and he's ending it at the top he's not going to play in the championship which he could easily play he could easily play for a Premier League club still I think he could be a decent player for a Premier League club especially a Premier League club coming into the Premier League um, but he clearly wants to you know enjoy his retirement enjoy it with his health still in a relatively good place with his body not as broken as maybe other people are um and also end it on his terms you know what i mean that's always a good thing i think in life in general whether it's work whether it's sport and achievement whatever it may be if you're able to kind of step away from it on your own terms it does do something to your will to your determination to your sense of satisfaction whatever it may be so big up mark noble for that one so let's quickly play a little clip of him talking um, I guess this is at West Ham giving his little speech as he heads into his last game for the club ever. It obviously, it's emotional. It's been a, I've been at obviously this club longer than I've, um, I haven't, if you know what I mean. So I joined at 11, um, had an incredible time. As we all know, some up, ups and downs. It's, <laughs> it's been tough at times, let me tell you. But um, before before you, you, we start the questions, I think that after the season we've had as as players and a, a group of staff um i'm gonna get emotional now um i think i think that we should we should all stand up and and congratulate the staff and the players for what they've done this year As I said, sometimes uh, you, you have to really uh, roll up your socks and lace your boots up and go again. And um, For me, the last two years, not playing as much, but being able to share the times with the boys has been <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Obviously, I, I joined us at 11 and... Um, I remember my f first day at Chapel Leaf, and uh, we, uh, I was at Arsenal before that, and we was always late because I 
yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Um, <laughs> and uh, we, could, we couldn't get there on time, and West Ham had, was clear that they, they wanted me from a young age, so um, joined at 11, and, and obviously I haven't looked back, but when, you, when, you, when you're a, a, a support of the club, like everyone here is, and, and you get to, to, to play for West Ham, and you get to captain the club you support, um, you can you can honestly say that I've probably lived everyone's dream in here. 100%, man. Absolute legend. And it's weird because I actually went to school with this guy. Like, I think I'm pretty sure you went to school. It was either, it was definitely secondary school. So all of secondary school. And then for sure, was it primary school? It wasn't primary school. But one thing I remember from young was that he was always good at football and this was when we were all trying to make it we were all trying to be pro we all went to get signed we all had dreams of playing in the park and that also in his car breaking down outside of the park and there's him seeing us play and went to sign us yeah i mean we had these really weird fantasies but there were a couple of people in our year or in our kind of you know um, school in general who were basically pro at that age right at that young age imagine because they were coming into school wearing england kits playing for the england you know under whatever their age they were playing for you know proper premier league clubs wearing the the kind of kid version of it it just used to freak you out like what the hell i'm playing for this sunday league team with pro star kits and umbro shorts and adidas socks that just mismatch of mismatch and you're coming in decked out head to toe in sponsored gear with your initials on it like cars picking you up like crazy stuff it just used to blow your mind but one of the things i really remember strikingly about mark from all the times i've kind of known him and again i haven't seen the guy in many many years but whenever i have kind of bumped into him he's always been really nice as a just just gentlemanly do you know what i mean in terms of how he carries himself was that he was always like this he was always a grown-up do you know what I mean? Like he kind of matured way quicker than all of the, all the other boys in our in our kind of you know age range, whatever it may have been, which was always kind of impressive to see. And then um, he kind of I think had that effect of rubbing off on other people, especially if you were, I guess if you wanted to be his friend and you wanted to hang out with him and be like one of his people that are in his circle, it probably you know it's probably in your best interest to smarten up, wise up, and get a bit more mature because he wasn't going to have you know distractions around him because obviously he was trying to make a professional football player. And that's one thing I also remember: I never saw Mark at parties. That's one thing you, I think, was a great realisation and wake-up call for me at that age when I was young. It was a clear representation or clear example of what it requires, what's required to achieve that level of success in a field, in a arena, in an area of life which is highly competitive professional football, right? especially in the UK. Everyone wants to be a professional football player. Similar to basketball, I'd imagine in the US, the standard of players here is just really high because everyone can play. Everyone can do kick-ups. Everyone can control the ball. Everyone can pass with both feet for the most part, especially if you're playing in like Sunday League, Saturday League level. So the competition to be, be pro at some of the best clubs in the country is really high because there's not enough spaces for people, basically. So if you want to make the difference and you want to make ensure that you have a career for the long term, you have to sacrifice things. And Mark Noble sacrificed the youth, basically a childhood. I hardly saw the guy outside of school, hardly if ever. And we lived essentially five minutes away from each other. Maybe I have saved in 60 second walk one time yeah where, when I used to live in Beckton. We basically lived around the corner from each other and I hardly saw the guy outside of school. Hardly, hardly ever. Um and this is a testament to him. I mean, his family, because I'm pretty sure he's still with the same girl. He's go out with a girl called Carly back in the day when we were in school. I'm pretty sure he's still married to her now for, uh, to, to this day. They have kids together and stuff. He's probably still hanging around with the same group of friends that he was with back then. Small circle, tight circle, family and friends only. And he sacrificed a lot back then to be successful as he is now. It's so much. And it's interesting too, because at the same time that he was being pro, and I, I remember when he was at Arsenal and he went to West Ham. And again, it's weird too, because, you know, people think of you know mark noble as this kind of workhorse midfielder kind of keep it simple type of guy but back in school he was incredibly skillful i don't know if that gets coached out of you or if that was just a kind of a personality you have when you're young and then you kind of evolve into the player that you want to be when you're older but he was very very skillful when we were younger incredibly skillful he used to score goals for fun he was more of an attacking midfielder than he was a defensive like interesting how things kind of change in it but regardless going back to the story there was another guy in our year too who i won't mention because you know it's just out of order to kind of get people you know names out there and make it seem like you're you're trying to diminish one person but it was just interesting to see how different lives can turn out 
when you're both just given the same opportunities in life to basically you know solidify your future and play you know the, the greatest sport in the world or at the highest level right in terms of football but there's another guy as well that mark was playing with at the same time who they were the only two guys who were basically pro at that time representing england representing premier league clubs or like championship clubs at the time maybe they were at the time and he i think at that time that guy was playing maybe reserve team football for them at that time it was fucking insane how the level they were but then suddenly out of nowhere I remember seeing Mark Noble randomly once driving a Range Rover Sport somewhere around here when we were young, thinking, whoa, do you know what I mean, this, I went to school with this kid and he's driving that at this age, absolutely insane. And then the next time I saw the other guy who t career didn't work out for him, I see him outside of an Iceland with his top off with a pit bull, do you know what I mean, with his hand down his trousers, like acting like a bad man. And I'm like, wow, this is really strange because when we grew up, he was never on, you know, badness or anything, never on that sort of time. And then suddenly, I don't know what happened. Maybe, you know, maybe not being, not being able to sign pro and maybe whatever else happened in life kind of changed him and maybe he got bad influences. I don't really know. But I just remember seeing that and being kind of reminded of just how quickly life can change for you. you know I mean, you get given all the opportunities and then a couple of bad choices here and there. And then suddenly you're on some other path that you probably never had any idea that you were going to end up being on. You're just having to make the best of it. So it kind of, you know, it's a shame, but it kind of is what it is. But yeah, um, big up to Mark Noble, absolute legend, 18 years of service at West Ham. He'll go down as absolute legend. From what I've read online, it looks like he wants to go um, to boardroom level. From what I've seen, I've seen articles talking about coaching. I've seen articles talking about him being a director of football, which I love. I love the idea of maybe him spearheading that to be a trend with some younger players coming up now. Maybe when they're retired, there'll be a lot more of them maybe going into boardroom type stuff. So we have a prolifera of absolutely well, um, well educated, experienced players in the highest levels of football, boardroom level, dictating things. That'd be awesome. The similar way that they do it in Spain, they have it in Germany, in certain parts of Italy too. Now nowadays, you know, I mean, come football ex players coming in and occupying those positions and kind of steering the club in the right direction in terms of overall vision. That'd be sick to see. So you know, wish the guy success. Obviously, going forward, I think he'll be completely fine. He's always had a good head and shoulders anyway. But I'm sure you know, ending the career the way he did, you know, again, like he mentioned, not being able to play as much was probably a bit bittersweet, but still man he played at the highest level played for his local boyhood club was able to represent you know for the club throughout all the leagues that they played at the time he was in there so yeah big up to mark noble man absolute legend of west ham bona fide legend actually absolute bona fide legend next we have this concerning news really really up concerning news especially cons considering how much of a fan i am of both of these artists and the group overall so it looks like young fug and gunner and the entire the entire roster it feels like of ysl um have been wrapped up in a rico indictment um the charges are pretty heavy um the only silver lining i would say is that this is a this is a this is a state police um, RICO charge and not like a federal one in terms of the FBI and the FBI from what I know when they come after you it's usually coming after you because they know you're gonna go to jail you're gonna go to prison sorry they have a ninety percent conviction rate um, you know the numbers are always silly when they do come after you. Um, they can obviously take you and basically send you to your prison as opposed to jail and you have to usually from what i've read too you have to serve 80 percent of your sentence if you get charged in the federal rico act whereas if a state you only have to do like 60 sometimes 40 percent of your um overall time served in jail which is different to prison and from what i've read prison especially if you're into supermaxes and your social confinement is way worse than being in jail even though jail sounds like an absolute crazy house to be in in general but overall sad sad situation i'm going to play a clip here um featuring the da of fulton county in atlanta speaking on the rico charge against young fug gunner and the entire ysl thank you chief Ryan. Um, today i'm joined by the atlanta police chief, chief rodney bryant stop it stewing in one more moment because this is really low there we go let's do this again Hopefully this works in turn on. Boom, boom, boom. Let's get it up to there and then put there. Cool. Should work now. And as well as my sheriff and our sheriff, <laughs> Sheriff Patrick Labatt. Um, we are here today about a grand jury indictment that was returned 
um, that included not just Jeffrey Williams, which is of some notoriety and media attention, but about 28 defendants that operated within our community between the time period of 2012 and 2022. Um, it is our allegation that they operated as a criminal street gang and commenced to do havoc in our community. That havoc includes um, crimes of violence, um, crimes of thefts, crimes involving drugs. I've made no secret about it, nor any apology, that as the district attorney of Fulton County, my number one focus is targeting gangs. And there's a reason for that. They are committing conservatively 75 to 80 percent of all of the violent crime that we are seeing within our community. And so they have to be rooted out of our community. I said just a week or two ago, it does not matter what your notoriety is, what your fame is. If you come to Fulton County, Georgia, and you commit crimes, and certainly if... Yo, she sounds like a mean, mean lady. And this was her two weeks ago, right? A week ago, sorry, talking about it. So maybe, I wonder if they got a heads up or if they knew what was going down because Young Fugger has been um, eerily quiet on social since, obviously since the death of his, one of his baby mothers that was killed outside of a bowling alley or something, right? Which sounded really sketched to me. It didn't sound like, you know, that's a weird thing to happen, especially for a woman, right? Randomly you get into an argument with a dude and he just killed you outside of a bowling alley. It didn't even make any sense. So maybe this explains why there was a lot of radio silence on Young Fugger's end concerning that issue. Um, and maybe that incident maybe sped up the reason why they went to sweep them up because maybe stuff was happening on the street that we weren't really too aware of on our end because it was kind of local stuff. I'm not really too sure, but she did say this a week ago concerning everything. Maybe this was kind of her way to give those guys a heads up. I don't know. DA Fonnie Willis told us. We expect that in coming days, weeks and months that we will bring RICO indictments against gang members, even top level gang members, to make sure that we rid them from our society. We spoke to folks. Mad, isn't it? But 70 to 80 percent of the crimes, or whatever being done, are by street gangs is absolutely wild, isn't it? And then, of course, there's a TV report, so that kind of sums it up really nicely here that I'm going to play for you. In a big story playing out in Atlanta today, we just learned minutes ago, Atlanta rapper Young Thug will not make an appearance today in court. After all, he had appeared to be on the docket for 11 o'clock this morning. His case has been assigned now to Superior Court. He was arrested yesterday at his home in Buckhead. We've been combing through an 88 page indictment throughout the morning, and this is what we found so far. Young Thug, whose real name is Jeffrey Lamar Williams, is facing charges of conspiracy to violate the racketeering criminal law and criminal street gang activity tied to a larger indictment. Police say he, along with 27 others, have been named in that long report alleging they have ties to the street gang Young Slime Life. Young Thug is cited as a founder of the gang, which claims affiliation with the Bloods. It started out on Cleveland Avenue in southwest Atlanta. Atlanta rapper Gunna, whose given name is Sergio Kitchens, is also listed in this indictment. Gunna is facing similar charges and is listed as an associate of the Young Slime Life gang. The indictment ties Gunna to the gang, citing his very own music videos and social media as evidence. We've been combing through this report line by line. The case doesn't just stop there with Young Thug and Gunna. It also involves rapper YFN Lucci, whose legal name is Rayshon Bennett. Lucci is currently in the Fulton County Jail serving time. We've been following his charges now for months. This new indictment says members of the YSL tried to stab and kill him with a shank while he was in jail. Lucci has been in jail since April of 2021 for Crazy. violating his probation in a murder case. Another name you may recognize in all of this is Christian Eppinger. He's also named in this indictment as a YSL member. We reported on him. APD says he shot an officer six times earlier this year. The officer survived. But Fulton County DA Fonnie Willis is pushing for Eppinger to get life behind bars because of his long criminal history. So this is a story with a lot of implications and a lot of layers. So as we get new... Crazy, isn't it? So it looks like the only silver lining that I said was because it's a because it's a state um, indictment and not um, and not a federal one. Most likely, there is an opportunity for those guys to get out. 
you know it's obviously very very slim don't get me wrong but there's still an opportunity where they will be able to get out um, but god almighty man what a crazy situation to be in isn't it what a crazy situation to be in um, and it also goes to prove how how much waste of time it is maybe to be a goon especially at the level that they were playing at from what's being a legend in the docket so in terms of point hits on people in terms of murdering people in terms of robbing people you know it's just at the end of the day it's either you end up getting got yourself or you end up getting arrested and doing credible time and in considering that they're multi-millionaire pop stars yeah you i would say you would kind of refer to Gunner and young Fug as definitely rap pop stars it just seems like an, enti an incredible waste of resources time um assets whatever it may be to be wasting it doing what they're doing right defending themselves to get these charges is gonna is especially i would imagine gonna bleed them dry if they do end up getting some time out or they end up kind of getting off on the charges it's going to put an incredible spotlight on them in terms of how they move and do certain things um it's going to maybe change the way they're perceived forever in terms of you know the deals and that they get and the deals that they don't get um it's just really feels like a waste of time like on one side i think people like myself who are fans of them are fans of them because we know you know if you're a fan of them you, you there shouldn't be no surprise that young fug is involved in this level of organized street crime whatever you might call it um this just should be this should come as no surprise to you if you're really a fan you've been paying attention and it also might be a part of the reason why you enjoy his music so much because you know there's a there's like a a filter of realness around everything that he's saying right there's like a there's like a sprinkling of actual you know he's lived a very real and interesting life where he's you know put some work in in various degrees people around him have put some work in which is why they basically command the respect that they command and then of course the music's good to kind of you know cap it all off and here we are as fans you know jumping up and down whenever a tape comes out and you know eager to see them perform live at certain shows um it's a bit weird isn't it Do you know what i mean Th that's the weird part about it and then also charlamagne made a really good point regarding this whole issue he was speaking on the breakfast club and he made a really really interesting point i thought regarding um you know young fug and what they mean to 300 entertainment their label and whether or not the label will actually stand by them considering how much they've profited off of the back of you know their fuggish ruggish persona that they kind of put out there i thought there was a really really you know good point from this is a young fug obviously mugshot here looking happy of course and this is a Charlemagne talking on the Breakfast Club uh, regarding the Rico arrest of, you know, the YSL members, you know, and predominantly the big ones in terms of young fucking gun, whether or not the Labour are going to stand by them. It's from January of 2013 to May of 2022, according to this 88 page indictment. Now, let's see if 300 is going to uh, stand by them, because, you know, these artists make music based off the same things that those brothers got picked up for. And these labels make money based off the same things those brothers got picked up for. A lot of people make money you know, marketing that lifestyle. So let's see what happens now that things are real and not just records. But if you recall, that's why YF and Lucy was trying to, to get released to be on house arrest because... Exactly. Really, really good point from Charlemagne in that regard. We know what's going to happen, though. Most likely, they're going to wash their hands of them. They won't be helping them in terms of getting them off the case. I don't know if this if that is even a smart thing for record labels to do, but considering the amount of money that they've kind of made and profited off of their gangster rap image, whatever it may be, to then stand aside and just kind of turn a blind eye to them in their darkest moments is a bit of a piss take. But we shouldn't be surprised if we are familiar with how people get down in the music industry and it should come as no surprise. Then I want to quickly mention how amazing Kendrick Lamar's brand new album or brand new album, brand new single, The Heart Part 5 is. Well, the singles, the album's actually coming out this week. The single came out and it completely broke the internet. It was a real good reminder as to the levels, um, you know, out there in terms of emceeing, in terms of rapping. I think for all of us who are big fans of J. Cole, who are various fans of us who are big fans of Drake and love when he gets new rappy rap shit, there's no denying that Kung Fu Kenny is just a league on his own. He's just an alien. He's just in another strat. He's in another stratosphere when it comes to his ability to rap, his ability to paint stories with words, his ability to enunciate, his ability to put songs together, tunes. It's just incredible. And I think this is an incredible track to come back off, off from what 
how, how long has it been five six years of hiatus to come back with this track which has got an incredible Marvin Gaye sample playing on it and if you know anything about the Marvin Gaye estate you know that they do not play when it comes to that great man's music in terms of granting you know in terms of clearing samples and in terms of letting people kind of rock with the music and not going after them and collecting their coins too so the fact that they were willing to kind of sign off on this just goes to show the level that Kung Fu Kenny is regarded at uh, maybe it goes to show how well regarded his label is TDE which is bittersweet too because this is going to be the last album on TDE um, before he goes off and starts to do his other thing um, with um, Baby Keem on the imprint they started I forgot the name of it but the opening a track like this after so long with an incredible Marvin Gaye sample just sets the tone completely and then the fact that the artwork corresponds with you know various uh, black figures I guess in American society who have been vilified or who have been misrepresent misinterpreted misrepresented in the media um, vilified whatever it may be um, is really cool there's hands there from Kanye from Nipsey to OJ Simpson many different people on there so I thought that was a pretty interesting artistic direction to go with things but you know when it comes to Kendrick Lamar his videos his single covers um everything is always very well considered but obviously the standout verse from this I think is verse three where he basically adopts the persona or the identity of Nipsey Hussle and basically tries to speak through him in terms of what his last moments were like and how he basically wants to be remembered um <laughs> When I first heard it, like, again, the the annoying thing about social media is that this obviously broke all over social and everyone was talking about it. So it wasn't a surprise. But still, when I actually heard it for the first time myself, it legitimately made me emotional, legitimately. And again, I wasn't the biggest Nipsey Hussle fan in the world, but I still was familiar with his music. I still played his albums. So to hear he died the way he died, considering what he did for that local community, considering how well regarded he was by people, it was just really disappointing and sad in the same way how when pop smoke died right he was just on the precipice of like blowing and becoming the next big rap superstar and then his life gets taken in such a clumsy horrible vicious way when they were going to do is just rob him of his jewels why can't you just rob him of his jewels and leave him alone why did they have to kill him that way right in terms of blowing him you know however three or four times however they did in the shower it's just you know it, it always kind of fills me with dread and the same thing with Nipsey Hussle how his last moments were in terms of you know how well regarded he was and he died in such a horrible way but the great thing about it has been the reaction to, or the response to it has been like how people have gone out of their way to kind of honor his legacy right like when people speak bad about Nipsey even people who are well established who are well, well connected who are from the streets um, who you know have done certain things and maybe people should be scared of them people do come out and still defend the guy so it goes to show how much you know how people how highly people feel of him that they were willing to go to bat for him even when he's not around and i think this was maybe one of the best tributes i've seen so far outside of obviously what happened at the funeral um and whatnot i thought that was absolutely beautiful but i thought this was really well done especially considering how long it's been since it happened um it was really a kind of sobering reminder as to you know the great man that we lost but again kendrick lamar's ability to speak through somebody like in the way that he did it's just otherworldly man like really otherworldly um there's what is it um where's it going with this thing i want the bit i liked uh yeah paid dues that's a line here from the from the verse from the verse where he's talking um in perspective of nipsey paid dues made rules change our love them same views made schools change curriculums so talking about what Nipsey done, right, in terms of, you know, his involvement with schools and colleges in his local area, but didn't change me staring down the barrel of that gun. So still, even though he was doing so much good work, the streets still and found a way to catch up to him, still found a way to, you know, divert the course of his life in some really cruel, bitter way. Um, but should I feel resentful that I didn't see my full potential? Should I feel regret about the good that I was into? Everything is everything. This ain't coincidental. I woke up that morning with more heart to give you. As I bled through the speakers, feel my presence. To my brother, to my kids, I'm in heaven. To my mother, to my sis, I'm in heaven. To my father, to my wife, I'm serious. This is heaven. Like, ugh. 
to good man to my friends make sure you count in them blessings to my fans make sure you make them investments and to the killer that sped up my demise i forgive you just know your soul's in question i seen the pain in your pupil when that trigger had squeezed and though you did me gruesome i was surely relieved i completed my mission wasn't ready to leave but fulfilled my days my creator was pleased i can't stress how i i can't stress i love y'all i don't need to be in the flesh just to hug y'all the memories can recollect just because y'all celebrate with me it respects the unity we protect is above all and sam i'll be watching over you make sure the kids watch all my interviews make sure you live out the dreams we produce keep that genius in your brain on the move and to my neighborhood let the good prevail make sure them babies and them leaders out of jail look for salvation when troubles get real because you can't help the world until you help yourself and i can't blame the hood the way that i was killed you all how to see it that's the only way to feel and though my physical won't reap the benefits the energy that i carry on emits still i want you Emit still, Ugh. yo. Kendrick is too much, man. Guy's a freak. He's an alien. I wonder what happens to other artists when someone like this drops. Is it just a silent acceptance that he's just way better than you, or do you still, in your mind, have to keep up the idea or the delusion or the hope that he's human as you are, and if you commit as much as he does to the artistry, to the writing, to crafting lyrics, that you could also be able to pen a song that resonates with people the same way this, this, this like, maybe, I don't know. I wonder if that is the case, but regardless, The Heart Part 5 is absolutely amazing. Check it out, please, if you haven't already. Um, a really amazing track by Kendrick Lamar. Can't wait to hear the album when it does end up coming out. Um, what a fantastic way to on uh, the legacy of Nipsey Hussle. The marathon continues, R.I.P. Nipsey, and it? R.I.P. Nipsey. So next in the news we have, next we also have some great news concerning my favorite place in the world, Berghain, has finally announced their June 2022 program, and this is absolutely jam-stacked with people that I want to go see. Obviously, the time that I want to go there will be this, which is the first weekend of June, Hopefully I'm going to try and get over there for like a Saturday and come back on a Tuesday or something maybe. And this one is a weird one because it's the Sylvester Club Notch. And if you know anything, or Club Notch, however you pronounce it, Club Notch, Club Notch, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. But if you know anything about Berghain, usually the Sylvesters are their anniversaries or their New Year's Eve parties, usually. Um, and it's weird that we're having one in June, right? It doesn't make any sense. But from what I've read online, this just their way of making up the date that they lost when obviously COVID happened. So they wanted to do this a couple of times and obviously COVID happened and then they had to close down for a prolonged period of time. And then you couldn't have a full amount of people in there. So it didn't make sense to have these kind of parties, bloody blah, 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 blah. So they're just making up for it and throwing it in now, which I don't really get because why not just do it later when it's obviously the time to do a, um, a New Year's Eve, New Year's Day kind of party. Um, I don't really understand doing it now, but as a punter, I'm not complaining. The lineup is still stacked with people that I'd like, love to go and see. The great thing about it is that it's stacked with people who you would consider to be mostly residents with the sprinkling of guest people here and there, but it's a mostly residents filled lineup of people. And I love that. That's one of my favorite things I love about going to these sort of parties is that you get to see actual residents. And usually because it's all residents, it means that a lot of the people who will be in there will be quote unquote regulars who everyone seems to be obsessed by these days. But they will be right. That's who's going to be there for the most part, because there's not really big you know fancy guests that they're getting in and flying from all over the place it's usually people who live in and around the city or in neighboring countries or whatnot or people that just play there often you know what i mean so i'm really looking forward to that and also it's going to be a weird one because it's one of the only times i can count maybe on one hand i've been to berlin and specifically the Berghain when it's sunny i always go during the winter i always go maybe you know 
the months between October and February when it's cold, 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 cold. So to go there and um, have the ability to go there and dance with strangers and, you know, and, and just enjoy the DJ sets on a very sunny day is going to be an experience. Maybe I have to change what I wear in terms of the clothes and stuff that I put on because usually I'm always decked out in my double sole shoes and bomber jackets and stuff. But if it's going to be this warm, it might be a good idea to go there and just, you know, skin up a bit. Do you know what I mean? And actually enjoy myself in a whole different way, which I haven't never done in a nightclub. I don't think I've ever been in a nightclub and been completely topless. It's always some sort of crazy t shirt jumper thing that I'm wearing. So I might actually end up having to do that. So I'm really looking forward to this going forward. Um, the fourth of June weekend looking forward to it so far tentatively the lineup reads as follows for Berghain Dr. Rubenstein et up Kyle Fadi Mohim Fadi Moham um, Fidel Josie Rebel Julia Huxable Luke Slater Natty Serious Norman Nodge Lorolando Sedef Adassi who I really want to see and Steffi I might have to go back and recount what i said about natty series because I, I said when i went when i went last time i didn't really enjoy her set at all i thought she was maybe the weakest out of the entire lineup but i'm open and willing to have my opinion changed on her again so hopefully we'll get to see i'll get to see her play then at panorama bar they have the following people playing um boris carcita chris cruz gerd jansen the absolute Don, so it's going to be great to see him playing panorama bar just imagine that's going to look jennifer cardini who's essentially you know God Janssen's um, clone but she's still decent enough in terms of DJ so imagine seeing them back to back that'll be pretty sick um, you got Kekilomo um, Kekilomo sorry you got Kitten playing <sighs> Wow, Lakuti, Marcel Deepman back to back with Kitten, so she's going to be playing twice. Crazy. Okay, Williams, Roy Perez, Ryan Elliott, Tamo Soma, Virginia. Then in the XXX floor, which I've never been to, I'm not too sure if this might be the place where they hold snacks. I'm not too sure, but I've never been to that floor. It's going to be Nemo playing back to back with Castro, Pablo Bozzi playing there. You got Peach on Fuzz playing there. You got Richie, Soundstream, and Vale Budino. And then another space which I've never been in called the Elec. How do you pronounce that? The Elec Traus Tuk Truck, the Electroca Kustischer Salon, or just Salon, <laughs> yeah. And the person playing there will be Baker and Book uh, and Balcama playing live. I see mostly live acts, right? You got Jaco Jaco, you got Coco Couchin, you got Exia, you got Alessandro Andriani. Debbie Chia, you got Genus, you got Luigi Di Verneni, you got Mary Lou and Massimiliano Pagliara. So absolutely stacked lineup of people um, playing on that weekend. Can't wait. It'll be super fun. Just go there for Bergheim, chill a bit. You know, if I can't get some time off from work, I'll work from home maybe the couple of days I'm meant to be there and then fly back on the first plane after work or something. It's going to be absolute barn so I really can't wait. So really looking forward to seeing that and really looking forward to being in and around the crowd when they enjoy themselves in those kind of occasions. Because I would imagine it's probably a different vibe in there when it's warm in it. Because I would imagine so. I really can't wait. Honestly, I've never been to a city when it's warm. It's always when it's cold, so it's going to be great to see it alive that way with the open airs and having a beer in the park and stuff and going for a bike ride, maybe going for a little jog before the rave. I don't know. There's many things I'm planning on doing, so I'm really looking forward to it. I can't wait. I can, cannot wait. On the other end of things, we have concerning news about Berghain going on there. I've saw this um, posted on the Berghain subreddit. Again, if you're a fan of that club and you're a fan of that city in general and you want some news and some insights of what's going on on the ground with some people who would regard themselves as locals and people who regard themselves as um, regulars of the club, definitely check out the Berghain subreddit. It's definitely a good resource. And somebody posted a screenshot here taken from the Berghain line live, which is an excellent resource also. It's an Instagram account to follow from essentially Saturday evening onwards they always post anonymous um, submissions of uh, queue updates in terms of pictures of the queue text messages saying how long it is whatever what's the you know what's the kind of hit rate in terms of people getting in it's great if you want to use it and you want to not sure what time to go definitely check it out but they had this really concerning message they were sharing that somebody anonymously shared to them via DMs and it says as follows um, was there yesterday and had f and three of my friends me as well had something put in our drink 
the burger and awareness team which i didn't know they even have which is great told us that this is probably um were ko drops i don't know what that means what's a, what's a ko ko drops that they had may cause uh, they had many cases in the last weeks but can't find who's responsible they told us that yesterday every hour someone collapsed because of this could you please tell people to be very careful and to not move around with open drinks so some absolute psycho is going into the Berghain and basically um, dropping, I don't know, what would it be? Would it be GHB, ketamine, whatever it may be in terms of a disassociative in some person's drink in an effort, I guess, to maybe what, date rape them or something? I'm not really too sure what the deal is there, but that's super concerning because, again, from the times I've been there, one of the major kind of plus points you can say about that place in terms of it being a super club is that in terms of drugs use of course everyone in there is taking drugs for the most part but for the most part it's also a place that i've probably felt the safest when it comes to just being around people who are high and maybe getting high yourself you don't really feel as if like you're in a crazy lawless you know excessive place everyone's kind of looking out for each other in a weird way i've, I've been you know a little bit off my nut and had people come up to me giving me glasses of water i've done the same thing for other people um i've seen people you know concerned getting their arm around you saying are oh, you okay making sure you're fine getting someone to help you up if you're there i mean one time i slept in there I, I, I was so tired i think i was in there for like 16 hours and i just ended up sleeping on in one of the little dark room bits towards the back somewhere and then they, you know someone woke me up and basically i guess i was sleeping my phone drops on the floor and you know cracked of course and somebody got my phone put it on my chest basically and put my hands over it or something because i don't ever sleep like that someone must have put my phone over my chest and put it on like that and then someone from the team kind of went around and said are you okay da, 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 da. yeah i'm fine I mean and just basically helped me downstairs and helped me to go and order a taxi and cab and stuff it's just brilliant lovely people so it's definitely a place that i've always felt safe in and, and i'm sure other people could also say the same especially if you go in there and you're scantily clad and whatnot and you want to feel free um it's definitely the best place to go so to hear this happening is a real shame it really really is and i hope they end up catching a culprit very very soon but definitely something to keep an eye on if you are gonna go there um you know basically keep your head in the swivel don't let anyone take advantage of you out there and don't allow yourself to be in a position where somebody has the ability to put that sort of stuff in your drink usually people are really i from what i remember being there they're usually really tight with their drinks or for the most part because it's such a dancey club which again, which is so weird to say because most clubs should be dancing. All clubs should be dancing, but you know what I mean. Most of the people just go and pose. But from what I've seen, most people when they do go to the bars, they go to the bar, they have their drink, they may stand around somewhere and they would leave them and then go and dance. There's not a lot of people I remember from being there most of, a lot of times. I've probably been there more than 10 times where people are literally on the dance floor with drinks. How we do in England. You know, I mean, people do it often in England, you're holding a whole pint, you're holding a beer bottle, a, a cocktail. But a day I've seen a lot of people just down their drinks at the bar or go to another area and then, you know, head straight into the dance floor and absolutely smash your face through, um, you know, everybody in terms of trying to find a space to dance and throw your hands up in the air. So, you know, it's really concerning to hear that. But hopefully they catch the person soon. Hopefully they catch them soon. Next, we have this pretty insane state of a um thing happening development over the last couple of days that i've been completely unaware of because i guess i've been away and whatever um but nini h a very prominent dj i'd say within this new fast techno hardcore scene whatever it may be called which i don't think is fair to her because i think she is a little bit more genre fluid and has in my opinion is probably a more skilled dj than some of the people within that group and is somebody that's far more interesting to listen to i was first came across who she was mostly based on that um the toilet in berlin was it called whore or how i even pronounced it i never know how to pronounce it but you know what i mean h-o-r um with the double apostrophes over the o i was mostly familiar with her via that platform and then later on because of some of her sets she might have done with um um possession which is a paris-based collective and also a release that she put out there Do you know I mean that's where i kind of are familiar with her name but she put out this statement, courtesy of Instagram, basically alleging that Possession 
had been withholding payment from her in terms of the EP that she put out on there. And it's been how distressing that has been dealing with a collective of people who kind of on one side of their mouth talk about representing the unrepresented because that's what they've done really in a good way. They've kind of represented queer LGBTQ plus people from, you know, misrep underrepresented um, communities and give them a platform to play that type of music that probably doesn't necessarily get played in the mainstream on a really high level. So, you know, we can't deny that it's not true. That definitely is true. And you'd imagine sometimes if somebody is, if, if somebody is, if it's a person signing you looks like you, maybe it's from the same place you're from or has faced the same struggles you have in their own way, you'd think maybe they'd kind of go out of their way to make sure that you feel as comfortable as possible. And they also wouldn't want to do you as dirty as maybe some of the whites, right? Let's just, let's just talk about it plainly. Maybe have done um, us minority people when we've been in the same position. But it seems like for whatever reason, the music industry, doesn't matter if it's electronic music, doesn't matter if it's R&B, hip hop, gospel, it doesn't matter. The music industry is always going to music industry and there's something about that industry that just turns people who would sometimes be decent outside of it into terrible people once they're in it. And I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the money, maybe it's the prestige, maybe it's the self-importance, whatever it may be, maybe it's all the above, but there's something the music industry does to decent people that doesn't make no sense because I don't think this is something that just happened overnight. This is definitely something that's been brewing in the background. It's definitely, I would imagine if you're a fan of position and you probably know those guys behind it, you'd probably say maybe they've changed over the years that you've known them and um, it just happens. I don't know why. It, the music industry does it. It contaminates everybody and unfortunately the person that always suffers the most is the artist and then of course the fans because you know if the artist isn't in a good zone to make music then we're not going to be serviced so it really is a lose-lose but anyway Nini H made the following statement it's a bit long but I'm going to try and get through as much as I can this is as follows dear friends and family this message is from uh, my producer side I keep it 100% real since I started musically as well as personally I own up to my mistakes and I take things that don't work out with grace. Releasing music since 2017, I have really, I had really good and really bad and okay experiences with various labels. My focus has never been only one genre, so my music has been risky to release for the labels at times, which is why I respect labels that trust in my music and take financial risk, which is insane to think in it. Some labels don't like to put out releases from artists with their multi-genre. Like, how does that make any sense? Isn't DJ Kicks and essentially that, isn't it? Or most, like I've listened to, not even DJ Kicks. What's his name? Jimmy Jules has got an album out at the moment. Jimmy Jules who signed to Innervision. It's called Plus and there's like, you you could easily say there's maybe six different genres covered on that album. And if anything, that makes him, that should make him a more appealing person to book and more interesting producer to maybe think of in terms of if you're putting a producer together. Some, I'm sure that album will end up getting jimmy jules way more looks than if he just put out an entire album full of you know um amb uh, what, you, what do they call it is it ambient house whatever that genre is that they play do you know what i mean just sticking to one genre is really bizarre why would you do that especially if it's a producer maybe it's a dj it probably makes more sense as a dj if you want if you want to get really kind of anal about it but it still doesn't make sense regardless so we continue we move but it's also clear to me that this is a business. Nothing wrong with focusing on the financials as well and, and think of what sells, quote unquote. Nevertheless, I think that it is important not just to exploit producers, newcomers or artists my size, just because artists will gain gigs because of those releases. Ah, okay. She's saying that these labels are purposely withholding monies from their EPs that they put in now because they're smaller artists and they're doing it under the guise of it doesn't matter anyway because you're going to still get booked off the back of this so even though we're not giving you what we owe you you're still going to make some money because you've got this release out you're going to make a lot more money maybe sometimes they'll maybe argue which i still think is scummy because if this money you owe this money you owe it doesn't matter what i'm going to get tomorrow i could i could win the lottery tomorrow you still owe me if i won the lottery tomorrow but you owe me 10 pound you still owe me 10 pound the principle is a principle, especially if I, especially if it's a service that I rendered to you and now I'm owed my fee or I'm owed my um, whatever, right? Like pay your invoices. Just simple as that. Um, just because artists will gain the, the, it go, it does not mean that those labels should allow themselves to be disrespectful towards these artists. I have been ghosted. My releases have gotten cancelled after a year and a half of waiting. And generally communication has been the bigger labels can be really tough, but I still keep my calm. 
that being said, I want to point out that what that possession label has been by far the toughest of my nerves. The EP I released on last year sold out very quickly and it's still being played everywhere. The fact that a European person of privilege in the middle of the pandemic where I had needed the money, earning thousands of euros from my own music and still not paying me just left me an extreme bad taste in my mouth. Awful. Not to mention that they are sold out of the records without sending me even one copy of the record. That is classic music industry scumbaggery, isn't it? They sell out your entire record. They don't pay you for it. And then they don't even send you a couple just so you can have your own collection. Cool. Um, I also learned that this is an active choice of the label during working with the production, with the distribution, sorry. On top of this, I've been trying to have a conversation, but I'm being completely ignored. So they're ghosting her, of course. It is getting extremely disheartening to make further releases for me. Um, I have, I hope this message reaches the people and exploited artists speak up about it and their experiences. Also, I want to show that the, the, the way to newcomers, that this is not okay to be ghosted by labels you are working with. If you cannot build a good and genuine relationship with a label, don't give them your best music because they don't deserve it. And dear labels, please do not ignore your artists. Generally be interested in them as well as their music. We are all human beings at the end. Exactly. Especially when it comes to that, you would imagine part of the reason why you would want to be good with your artist is because you'd want them to create good work. So you want to be pally pally with them. You want to make sure that they feel good about themselves and they're in a good mental space and that they feel loved and they feel welcomed and they're in a safe space and they can ask you whatever they need da, 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 so that you can get the best work out of them that's what you'd want and then and again as a human because you're in this weird you know dance electronic music scene that not a lot of people get it's just nice to have another comrade comrade in, in arms that you can kind of moan about stuff with talk about gossip about certain people it's just a nice thing to have so the fact that they go out of their way to just you know um ghost people ignore them make them feel less than is really disheartening anyway it continues my last thoughts on finding solutions generally also for producers one artists and djs you can join um a slice a slice where producers can be paid personally from djs who are playing their music while touring i think it's a really good alternative to this weird business true we generally um, have a struggle of delays on releasing vinyl, so maybe everyone should be explore. How else can we bring something to the table without being stuck with waiting for labels, distributors and other related businesses? Also, smaller businesses, record labels don't really make money on it so at all either, so there's a pressure there as well. Hope for, hope for fair work environment for all for artists that release music. Maybe the only way to kind of sort it is just a self-release especially if you're going to put out your own records and whatnot, or when you're maybe first starting out, just self-release as much as you can. And then maybe sign up with a partner, with a distributor to get the music out there in the right places, but just do it all yourself as long as you can. Or if you can't afford it, and even if you can't afford it, save up and do it because it just sounds like an absolute headache doing it with these labels overall in it. Um, obviously the comments um on her post as follows miss kitten wrote as follows hi for support i'm french not the first time i hear that experienced it myself in the past and bad people using the word underground to abuse you whilst making money on it and killing it so shame exactly possession but you know kind of sell themselves as an underground dance collective which they probably were at one time now they've definitely you could, they can't say that they're essentially you know the paris version of flipping boiler room to this to some extent um, they're still doing good good work in terms of bringing up younger you know artists and people who probably didn't have a shot at making it but you know the facts are the facts so that's interesting to see that you know in the Paris scene people are talking about them and how d dirty they do people in business another person Dave Clark of course he says not surprised they are renowned for an attitude that is not nice so many people have told me about them in Paris be strong awful Another person, Ellen Alien, says, oh, no, this is, isn't respectful. Please clear the situation. Our techno community means to respect each other. Nini, so sorry to hear that. Wow. All the big dogs are coming out. DJ Rebecca said, this is not the first negative story coming out for possession that I've heard. A blight, different experiences. I'm sorry you have had to have a rough time. And thanks for your honesty and openness. I'm still waiting for your follow-up on whatever. Duh, duh. 
uh, Julian Mulia says, I'm really sorry to hear this, but definitely not surprised. It's also their way of treating newcomers and upcoming producers on the booking side. Stay strong. Okay, they do it to, okay. They healthier and more good labels. Hype Activist says, yes, BB, it had to be said. Now repeated until it can respect, hopefully start to see a change. More realness, less hype. Sending my love, be respect. I love that kind of catty stuff, right? More realness, less hype. I wonder why they're saying that. Why would you say that? Why would you say those kind of things concerning that kind of label? Julian Huxable came in. Loads of people have come out and supported um, Nini. Wow. Say this, sis. Sorry to hear this. And I hope they act expeditiously. Um, H HK Patch Babe say the same thing. Full support. Really fucking sorry to hear this. Uh, uh, Prada Monroe says, thank you for sharing. I am Patrick Mason says, don't let them, don't let them dim your light, babe. Big love and respect, though, to you. Another person says experiencing the same thing with them, still waiting for the contract to be signed and never received a copy of the vinyl I'm on. Holy shit. Another person, Jensen Helicopter says, I'm with you on this way. Sis, I love you so much. Jensen Helicopter is another amazing producer, man. One of the best electro producers out there. Definitely check him out. Um, I love you so much. Thank you for having the courage to speak out about this. Horrible problems and broken situations. This toxic behavior of powerful labels, promoters, is playing the valuable only for their own capitalist needs to stop. Position Techno, y'all need to do better. So absolutely strong words from them. And let's hear what Position Techno said in terms of response. This is as follows. We went on an adventure of the label during the period of pandemic without the having measured and extent the administrative work that is um uh administrative work that is represented. It was a spontaneous gesture which allowed us an artist to exist in the context of global confinement. Are they saying is this something that they wrote in French and then translated into English on Google or something? It sounds mad. It was never a question for us not to re remunerate the artists. Why are they using all these mad words? Just to, just, okay, um, not to remunerate the artists according to the agreements that we have concluded and the contracts that we have signed with them. There was never any question of minimizing their work, their talent, their music, or confidence they brought to us. We are aware that without these artists, our activity would not exist. Duh. To follow up on this artist, to follow up on artist Nini H statement, we agree that it is important not to exploit music producers. We did not know how to manage the, the essential work in the activity of a label, nor knew how to surround ourselves with the qualified people who could have prevented us from making these mistakes and failing so far behind and falling so far behind. So on artist payments, we hope they will forgive. They will forgive those deficiencies. We are committed to sending all artist royalty statements as soon as possible. We recently hired a full-time administrator as part of our team to manage these issues and administrative matters of our event productions with our sincere apologies. So they don't really say they're going to, I guess maybe you could say royalty statements, but they don't really say they're going to sort out the payments ASAP. Maybe they just don't have the funds to do so, but at least they fronted it and they put it up on their feed. They didn't hide it behind their Instagram stories and shit, but it is still concerning that they only did this because they got called out. That's the only thing that always bothers me about this sort of stuff. It's less so the response because the response is what it is. You have to basically say something and try to protect your back. But it's the fact that you never responded to me directly and you only responded when it started to get sticky for you on social media. You didn't want to look bad in front of your peers and whatnot, people in the industry. It's really, really odd. I don't really like all this. Um, people in the comments saying, shame to this. There was a time and effort made for the promo artwork and staggered releases. So I could imagine that paying the artist should be the first priority. Would be good to hear other artists' feedback on the experience of possession releases. Um, was it just Nini H who experienced this? And unfortunately, you won't hear much more from other artists because it requires a lot of bravery to say these sort of things. Because I would imagine when you say these things, it probably does blackball you from the industry in some way. I'm pretty sure there's things that I've said on this podcast that I don't even remember that have probably put me in a bad light or have maybe blackboard me to certain people that I probably have no idea it's been blackboard to unfortunately people in the music industry are just sensitive like that especially when they um when they partake in nonsense behavior they tend to not really take account for their own actions or self-reflect or try and change or just kind of point the finger at whoever is calling them out and basically turn them into the villain so the fact that she came out and said this is a big deal and it's also no coincidence that everyone came out and rallied behind her after she said it but they didn't come out and step out and say it when she was going through what she was going through do you know what I mean that's that's basically because to tell you everything you need to know about the music industry um another person said zero response to fans about missing merch to items too 
Oh, so they've been really running business terrible. Another person says, please release the reggaeton hard techno dance mix with Rosalia. That sounds horrible. Why would you want that? A reggaeton hard techno trance mix. Or is, or is that person making a joke? And donate the profits to it. Oh, okay, so I think they're making a joke. And don't suppose played artists and interest rate or charity delay. Okay, cool. Another person says, hire the right people. If you don't, if you can't, if you can't deal the work as you are growing with a team of professionals, um, grow. I know that many want to keep the team small. I don't know. Shut up. What you're saying there. Another person says, and you want to say to me that you forgot to pay the artist. Another person here. So yeah, the response hasn't been great. People are definitely not happy with what they're to say. Why apologize instead of just professional respect for the beginning? Exactly. Good point. But yeah, man. Um, again, I'm not surprised. I think in general, these labels, they don't know what they're doing. Um, these people in the music industry are always get corrupted, especially when they get a little bit of success. It's the kind of standard fable that kind of runs through the entirety of the music industry scene. And for whatever reason, dance music doesn't seem to be... Um, doesn't seem to be immune to it it also happens to them too do you know what i mean there's something about this scene the community the industry overall it just turns people into horrible human beings where they'll do the most scumbag things to you where you legitimately can't pay your light bill you can't eat food you can't move you can't get public transport and they're withholding payment or ignoring you and ghosting you and here you are you know pretending to be the successful artist and keeping the image up or not trying to you know burn any bridges but you're legitimately your belly's hurting because you're hungry and they don't give a flying fuck it's really is awful man but um big up nini h for speaking out anyway and really kind of letting people know what is really going on um and hopefully the change that needs to be done will end up happening hopefully we can only hope in it man can only hope then i saw this post courtesy of trezor berlin they had an opening party over the weekend this it's been the first time it's been open in about two years isn't it um when it closed obviously because of the pandemic and i think if i remember reading partly because of a refurb and then it never opened because i guess they just couldn't open or didn't want to open um with reduced capacity that was one thing you have to give a lot of the berlin people credit for even though a lot of them it cost them their livelihood and some of the places haven't recovered i remember that guy from blitz club in is it munich or something he said something on the lines of even though we're open and people keep telling me it's great the one thing that keeps hurting me and, and gives me nightmares i'm not happy about is the fact that i've lost all these great staff people that are never coming back you know even though the clubs are open they're never coming back to these jobs again because they've all moved on they decided to seek other careers they've moved to other places and you know you'd imagine in a place like that that takes nightlife so seriously those people who work behind the scenes are the real glue that hold those places together do you know what i mean and without the right people there the club suffers too so even though he's got his doors open he doesn't have the right bar staff doesn't feel like he has the right door pickers or security or cloaking people which is effectively affecting the entire bottom line so you have to give people credit who just said you know what we're not opening the entire pandemic we're just not going to open we refuse um uh, we only open when the pandemic is quote unquote over which would mean which essentially did happen anyway um that all the places that were first to close were also the ones that were last to open just because of the risks involved and you know people catching it and spreading it whatever it may be um but it's great to see that it finally did reopen over the weekend I had a barnstormer over line up loads of legends that you all that we all know and love um play there of course I got one here version you got dj stingray you got a guy called zadig aka ksa you've got a person called minimal violence that played there you've got another person called lutzi i think that's the girl that played with him jen's helicopter i think the electro person i saw play beforehand and you've got another person called mariana um who's also from berlin but the picture the videos i thought were pretty cool of inside people partying and stuff there's not much else in there because i'm assuming they cover your phone like everyone else i think i went there once when i went to berlin maybe it was like in 2018 or something i forgot what it was like in terms of entry but this is one video taken from inside of trezor during its reopening the legendary berlin club <laughs> pretty decent isn't it 
like amazing looking club um you, we've, the funny thing is when you see trezor you see other bits of other clubs around the world and you think oh they copied it no so it's usually the other clubs copy trezor because it's a legendary place so um it's got so much history in there um so many things i could talk about in terms of the club itself and the documentaries i've watched which i'm not going to you know bore you to death with but definitely check it out if you haven't already um there's many cool documentaries on youtube that will kind of tell you the story that you need to know about the place um i wish i could translate this this looks like a really interesting um review of the actual show let's see what the person said about this can we translate this here inspect speeches nope uh let's see if we can google this is this spanish or is this in italian it seems spanish to me yeah it is uh it says the person that went there right with the mark on their hand with the trezor what is it lighters i guess i'm assuming matchsticks it says what a session it has been marked with the dynamite i have no words about the piece of sound system the obviously the sound system was amazing it's another level to listen to something like that you have to take a plane the bass sounded very fine i had never heard it like that and the piece of chicken coop i have set up in the front and the fence with five spaniards that i have met in the queue the, for the joint okay so he bumped into some spanish people and had a joint they told me you're the fucking master for having told us where to go how the bastards have messed up <laughs> cool so clearly everyone's having a good time there great review of the place itself um a couple of djs that obviously went there taking the obligatory dj pick outside of the place they okay they all had fun an old school picture of the place itself you know some cage warriors there is that sim who is that playing there is that the guy sim that that dj i think so but yeah it looks pretty decent isn't it? um another place that i probably might end up visiting when i'm there um hopefully the first weekend of june fingers crossed fingers crossed but yeah what an incredible space in it what an incredible looking space can't deny but yeah let's hope i can end up going there sooner rather than later mm, what else are we going to talk about here let's move on yeah let's see you've seen this guys this is pretty mad isn't it apple took a discontinue the ipod after 21 years man what a bittersweet moment the iPod was legitimately one of the first bits of like proper technology that I purchased, I think, outside of like a video game console. It must have been the iPad, uh, for sure. The iPod was the first thing, and I absolutely loved mine, man. I would had, I don't know, so much music on there, so much stuff that I kind of listened to until the thing absolutely broke. And I still maintain that I preferred iPods that just played music as opposed to f the phone version, which is essentially just an iPhone um nowadays before it was just like a phone that could also browse and no cellular network and now they sell ipods with apps with flipping um you know sim cards so you can make calls on which doesn't make any sense really considering but you know whatever it changes um but it says as follows courtesy of the bbc apple has announced it is discontinuing the music player the um ipod touch bringing to an end the device widely praised for revolutionizing and people listen to music Do you remember the advert about you know 2000 or something whatever music songs in your pocket it says yeah when the ipad first launched in 20, 2001 it could store 1000 tracks today there are more than 90 million songs on apple music surface streaming service the apple touch was designed by the same team that later invented the iphone quickly overshadowed the ipad apple last updated the ipod in 2019 wow so we've just basically got the same iteration of it since then. Crazy. There have been various iPod remodels, sorry, models over the years, including the Nano, the Shuffle, but the iPod Touch, which was released in 2007, is the last model to be discontinued. Apple says it will remain available to buy while stocks last. The gadget has redefined our music discovered, listened to and shared, said Greg Jowalski, said Greg Josiak, sorry, the senior vice president of worldwide marketing Apple. iPod fans have taken social media to share their thoughts of the news and their memories connected with the music devices a person says to me the ipod is the most innovative product of our time lifetimes it led to changes in the way that we communicate function and collaborate it was it was and not the first in class but it was the most efficient heck on a heck of a run ipod uh, another person says farewell ipod this is my first apple device true that might be my first apple device too come to think of it it definitely was 100 percent. so many good memories connected with it bought it while i was in the uk for the first time in my life as a kid had some pocket money saved and for the first city trip got it from the first shop i saw crazy isn't it man that's such a sleek easy amazing design with the click with the click wheel um the way you could scan through songs select them shuffle 
what a beautiful device man like what an incredible and again people say sometimes that people say oh your design can save people's lives and the design can change the world and i can sometimes vomit in my own mouth but there are moments when you just see something so beautiful so elegant that was able to bring so many people joy in various different situations in their life uh, and it was again so elegantly done minimal you know minimal without trying to be minimal and boring um, the first model iPod was revealed by Steve Jobs in a typical Apple style in 2001 with much fan fan anticipation. Um, there had been rumors of the company had been announcing a new music player after the invitation to the event says, hint, this is not an iMac. Uh, it's not a high Mac. Um, music's a part of the, everyone's life. Music's been around forever. It will always be around, Jobs said during the hour-long presentation. The big headline of the night was 1,000 songs in your pocket. Over the years, many celebrities have thrown their star power behind iPods. Oh, do you remember that time back in the day, iPods used to come preloaded with U2 songs and shit? way to kind of fudge, fudge the numbers man but tech analysts say that it was inevitable the iphone would one day replace the ipod the quote says here when apple created the iphone it knew that it would ultimately mean the beginning of the end of the ipod um caroline melanese the creative strategist for the um, creative strategist in general said the decline of ipod sales was connected to the rise of iphone sales like the move from digital sales to streaming the demise of the ipod is probably the best example of apple not being concerned about cannibalizing its own products so yeah what a shame man what a real real shame i'm sad it's going but i guess it's the way of the beast in it i guess it's the way of the beast this has been the agassino zinger show episode number 274 i think um, thanks again for tuning in it's been a pleasure to have your company and if it's your first time check out the show as per usual make sure you you know like all the things you want to like subscribe where you want to subscribe follow the patreon um leave me a review all that good stuff i'd really appreciate it if you listen to the show via podcast app you'll hear a tune of the day which i haven't preloaded so i'm going to just choose it when i end up editing this podcast and if you're just watching it via youtube you won't see any of that you'll just see the screen go dark but thanks again for tuning in it's been a pleasure Peace.